gentlemen. It's nice to see you all back here in Nuremberg for the podium's discussion about white band gap. We are now doing the SIC, and I'm so happy to see so many people attending the show. And I don't want to make too many words. We sit here very comprehensive, and we will start from over there with Anubala and then go around. And after every presentation, there are a couple of minutes to do questions. That's the way we want to operate this time. Here we go. Anup, come on. Thank you, Bodo. Oh, it works. Okay. Thanks for coming, everybody. I'm good to see so many people here. My name is uh, Anup Bhalla, and I'm the chief engineer for power devices at Corvo. Uh, United Silicon Carbide got acquired by Corvo in October of last year, and we are now part of Corvo. So I think you're, you're all aware in power electronics, you want us to make you switches that have no resistance when they're on, so they have very low conduction losses. You want them to switch efficiently with as little loss as possible. That means fast transitions where the overlap regions are very short in time. And you know, to make the devices cost effective, we've got to make them small so you can get lots of devices on a wafer. That leads to thermal challenges and we've got to get the heat out. So the picture on the right is the third thing you've got to take care of, which is after you've had good conduction losses and switching losses, you need to have an efficient way to get the heat out, low thermal resistance. We are, like every other semiconductor company, evolving our technology every year. Uh, at this point, we've reached our fourth generation of technology. We're a company that builds our semiconductor devices based on JFETs. We build silicon carbide vertical trench JFETs. There's a power electrode on the top, one at the bottom, and then there you can see the gate electrode over there. This device doesn't, need a, doesn't have a gate outside, but it's normally on by nature. So we typically will stack a low voltage MOSFET on top of it to build it into a normally off uh, cast code, and we call that a SIGFET. So you can see from this plot, resistance versus breakdown voltage of various classes of uh, switch technology by voltage rating. And you can see in blue that the reason we make devices this way is we can ultimately get a much lower resistance for a given chip size. That's the basic reason. If you have lower resistance, resistance for a given chip size, it means at a certain RDS on, the chip will be small, so it'll have lower capacitance. And it, with each generation, we just try to improve upon this. So our fourth generation makes a 40% improvement over what came before it, roughly, which means the capacitances go down. And once the capacitances go down, then this is an example of how our Gen 3 compares with our Gen 4. For the same RDS on, you can see the switching losses come down because switching losses in CAS codes are really just about charging and discharging the output capacitance of the device. And at the bottom there, there's some information about, you know, it gives you a sense of how much the capacitance is reduced you know, for the same chip size. But that's all well and good. We keep making the chips smaller because that's, it's more efficient for switching, but it creates a thermal problem. So here's a picture that tries to show you um, you know, what a 40 milliohm silicon carbide MOSFET might look like and its thermal resistance when it's soldered to a tier to 47 compared to a 30 milliohm device from us, which is a lot smaller. If we soldered it, its thermal resistance would be pretty bad. So we have to center it in the package by which we can then get, you know, manage the size reduction and still have good thermal resistance. The other thing we have to do is thin the chips because the silicon carbide itself is part of the series thermal resistance. So with all that, we can get the junction to case down to roughly half of what it would be if we soldered it. That helps to get the current ratings up. And the impact is really great for, for higher RDS on smaller devices. You know, it could be up to 50%. This is just a picture showing you know, what you have to do and conduct the heat away from that small chip. Very important thing to manage. So with that, we've been launching devices now for the last year and a half. We started out with a 750 volt technology, put out a few devices, and then extended the portfolio last year to 
cover the range from 6 milliohm single devices at 750 volts to 60. So that's the range of offering we have. And they cover all the typical applications, onboard chargers, DC-DC converters, um, uh, you know, computer server power supplies, circuit breakers, uh, energy storage uh, systems, but the, um, and some traction type designs based on discrete. So the, that range of offering means, you know, you have a lot of choices. You know, you can, you'll usually find two or three devices work in your circuit. The most expensive one would probably work the best, but you can work your way down to, you know, what meets both your cost, performance, and thermal requirements. So that's the reason for all those choices. And uh, at this show, we are launching the 1200 volt version of that technology. Uh, we've begun with a few devices here. The light blue column is our offering of generation three devices. They go from nine milliohm at the lowest end to all 400 milliohm at the high end. And there's a few devices here, the 23, 30, 53, and 70 milliohm class, really tailored for um, 6.6, 11, and 22 kilowatt onboard chargers. But they, since they use the same circuits in other applications like UPS and inverters, you know, the same devices will function well in those circuits as well. So all the key advantages of SIGFET technology are still there. It's the lowest R on uh, per unit area switch technology. It still has great capacitance, so good switching figures of merit. Still can use a 0 to 15 volt or 12 volt gate drive. It's the only wide band gap device that works like that. You can put a silicon gate driver on it. It has a five volt threshold, so you can just switch it that way. It's got a great body diode because of the way it works, and I explained about the fact that we have to sinter it because the chips are so small. So that's still possible done for this generation of technology. And currently these are made available in those two types of TO packages. So I'll take your questions. Uh, you say that uh, we reduce the Bay Area and we reduce also the thermal resistance. This is because we make this interization or there is other variations that you did, there may be in thickness for the new generation. So if I understood your question right, I think you're asking how we reduce this yes. thermal resistance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so we have to improve both the die attached material and thin the chip more. Yeah. Both has to be done. We turn over to Guy Moxie for the next uh, Session. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Guy Moxie from Wall Speed Power, and I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I'm not going to talk about 650 volt or 1200 volt. I'm actually not going to mention a battery electric vehicle either. There's plenty of that information around. I'm going to share with something that's new, something to look forward to in the future, and to be quite honest, something that scares the life out of me. Mid voltage. Mid-voltage for us is 3.3 kV, 6.5 kV, 10 kV, and above. The next frontier for silicon carbide. So it's not available today, but it's going to be available very soon. So we're starting to think about the applications that it enables, how it enables, and more importantly, to get the systems that go around it, because this is a radical change from what silicon can do today. So we're talking here traction, obviously, mid-voltage drives, heavy earth moving equipment, solid straight transformers, wind, grid distribution, VAR compensation, all of the science goes around the mid-voltage area, can be enabled and will be enabled with silicon carbide. You've seen the performances of silicon carbide in lower voltages, switching loss, conduction loss, power density. All of these are applicable to the higher voltage space too. So I mentioned, I wouldn't mention battery electric vehicles. Slight, slight white lie there because traction and mobility is applicable to mid voltage as well. Traction being trains, being the mega earth moving equipment that uh, digs up the planet. Here, raw efficiency savings. Silicon carbide compared to IGBT, compared to Thyristor GTO type technology is just a monumental change, a monumental difference. And I'll show a couple of more relevant examples next. 
but traction, mobility, heavy earth moving equipment. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of kilowatts here. Higher voltage, traction goes up to 2.2 kV, for example, on a DC link. All of this now is the focus for the next generation of silicon carbide. But let's look at some real examples. So we're looking at grid-tied renewable energy. Grid-tied at 13.8 kV. Okay, I'll just pause there, 13.8 kV. And the joy here is the switching frequency. When you're at IGBTs at that level, you're switching in hundreds of hertz. So the magnetics in a static power conversion are just ginormous. With silicon carbide at that voltage level, you're switching in tens of kilohertz. It's magnitudes different. Now, I will not say that that's going to be an easy thing to achieve. <coughs> Inductors at 2.2 kV at high frequency are going to be a challenge. Gate drivers, sensing, cooling, the whole system architecture has got to be reapproached. But that was the same conversations we were having in lower voltage 8, 10, 12 years ago. It's within the capability of this industry to do it and to harvest it. But just look at the difference you achieve. 40 kilohertz at 1,700 volts. 40 kilohertz medium frequency transformer. 40 kilohertz compared to hundreds of hertz. And then 10 kilohertz up at 10 kilovolts. That's unheard of within the silicon industry. This is what silicon carbide is bringing to the table. And just to give you a more relevant example, we call it, it was called supercharging. I think you would call this mega charging. Again, tying to a high voltage line, 13 kV down to 480 volts. 13 kV to 480 volts. This is capable, 500 kVA. This is capable with silicon. It's being done with silicon today. But as you can see, the efficiency is rough under 95%. And let's just look at the volume, the size. 5,000 liters for the conversion system. 5,000 liters, okay? When you look at silicon carbide implementation, efficiency goes up nearly 4%. Size, 1,298 liters. This is a radical reduction in overall system efficiency, power density, and cost. So this is what's next for silicon carbide. We get busy, we proliferate. My colleagues here are all busy proliferating in the mainstream products, but let's not lose track of what's coming ahead. And ahead is 3.3, 6.5, 10, and above. Different market, multi-generation of opportunity. Any questions? Okay. No Thank you questions. very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eugene Stampf. I'm from Mitsubishi Electric, and the uh, next four minutes you will be with me. I would like to talk in my presentation about motivation, hesitation of using of silicon carbide device. My intention not to talk about performance of silicon carbide device because this is becomes already clear for everybody today in the, this room. Today, two points are motivated uh, engineers to use silicon carbide or to switch from silicon to silicon carbide. First is efficiency, energy, or cost saving, and another one is volume and weight reduction. So far, all past years, the second point, volume and weight reduction, was a major, major, major point. It was a play major role for using of silicon carbide. Efficiency play not so big role. But what we can see today uh, in electricity price, especially for residential application, in December, we paid in Germany 30 euro cent per kilowatt hour. Before Ukraine crisis, this price is already, now what is written there, 41 euro cent per kilowatt hour. And after Ukraine crisis, we see already 51 euro cent per kilowatt hour. 
he would talk about uh, this uh, electricity inflation, not about two, three, five percent. We talk about jumps of 20, 30, 40 percent. And actually, as I got uh, my electricity bill in uh, the springtime, not only I cry, not only my wife cry, only my, also my cats start, start to cry to see this electricity bill. How to connect this with silicon carbide with a uh, real application? For sure, we need application, residential application with a long run time. That's one example will be aircon, but we don't have so much aircons uh, in Germany, but with this spreading of uh, interesting application like a heat pump. All new heater in the Germany will be heat pump, and heat pump uh, does not work like a washing machine, just one hour per week, that working several hours per, per day. And now let's go to the motivation. <coughs> The typical switching frequency for the residential application must be above of 16 kilohertz yeah, due, due to the audible noise. And if we will take uh, this switching frequency, then the power loss, the average power loss of silicon or ratio, silicon carbide to silicon will be one third. One third and uh, high electricity price. And operation for, for example, one half of day means 12, 12 hour, we can make a simple calculation when amortization will be started. I talk about amortization just by replacing silicon by silicon carbide. I don't about, uh, talk about uh, advantage uh, by replacing of a heat sink or filter. And if you will see at the beginning, initial price ratio of silicon carbide to silicon double, the amortization will happen in 1.5 hours. It's very, very short. We don't talk about years. We don't talk about uh, decades here. And in case we have initial price of five, this is the last line we see amortization time in six months. This is a half year, yeah. It is very, very quick. And probably this time, amortization time is because more shorter if our electricity price, residential electricity price will go up further. And it is expected. Okay, that was a motivation. Let's talk about a little bit about hesitation. My job is, my job is application engineering. And what I see here every day, this is a hesitation due to unknown reliability. Yeah? Reliability is, uh, becomes like a religion, belief or not belief, but we should not believe this, we have to have a fact and we have to talk about this. And actually there are topics what academia raised permanently must be closed by, by manufacturer. We have to take care that, uh, that uh, the beginner, the failure at the beginning uh, of the, this uh, bus tube curve must be suppressed below of silicon. And also random failure must be suppressed under, under silicon. Silicon is a blue curve and uh, silicon carbide is a red curve. And I think if we will have a common understanding with the end operator of silicon carbide, then both can sleep well as a manufacturer, end, up, uh, end user or operator. And uh, we will see also much, much, much brighter acceptance of uh, silicon carbide compared to silicon. And then please let me spend 10 sec seconds for self-marketing. On the left side, we see our proposal for residential application for heat pump, the silicon carbide in deep IPM, where 15, 25 amp rated current. The best sell is 15 amp, and for traction, we have 3.3 kilovolt, already three devices. Uh, best sell is 750 amp, already used since two years in, in Europe in, 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 in locomotive. And for industrial, we have very bright uh, lineup, and his best seller, Full Seeker, two in one, 800 amp, 1200 volt, which is used in renewable energy. Thank you very much for being with me. Some questions? When you, when you talk about screening, you talk about screening in wafer fab or in testing operation? We talk about both, about screening on wafer, but also end power models must be screened in order not to, to avoid putting, uh, how to say, not healthy power models into the field. Boss. So, thank you very much for joining. Thanks for inviting Bodo. Um, we have a slightly different position in silicon carbide than my fellows here on the stage, because we do not really produce silicon carbide chips, but we package them. So, Semicron has a vast history of packaging third-party uh, chips, starting with IGBT, of course, more than 25 years. Now, of course, also silicon carbide already for 15 years. So we have all the industry standard power modules in our hand. We have automotive technologies um, that we are rolling out into the market. And uh, we, we package the chips that we buy in, mainly then IGPTs for the silicon or today silicon carbide MOSFETs. We combine them maybe also with some rectifier chips from our side. 
and we pat package them in the industrial standard packages for the industrial area using our packaging technologies. That's soldering, uh, we sinter, we have different wire bond materials. We also can combine that uh, with different substrates to make sure we get the most out of the chips that we buy in. So this is, this is our focus. So we do really focus on what we can do best. That's the packaging. And we really talking to all the silicon carbide manufacturers that we see on the market and also that we see here on the stage. So I'm really happy to see you guys who are so friendly to sell the silicon carbide to us. Um, we are really concentrating on what we can do. That's the packaging. We talk to all of them. We have uh, very good regulated partnerships with these guys, which means we have an, a safe access to the silicon carbide, but also an early access to the different technologies. And that's also one of our USPs. We are able to combine existing technologies um, from the chip side, whether that's silicon, silicon carbide, into the modules, and select then also the right chips for a certain market, for a certain application. I would like to... Um, now spending my first minutes on the self-promotion, I would like to talk about some, some uh, applications as well. First one, EV charging. Um, still a relatively new application, but one that is really focusing on silicon carbide because it is really made for silicon carbide. I just showed an uh, example of a, of a topology on the left-hand side where we have an AC to DC conversion, fully bidirectional, based on TNPC modules in our semi-top uh, E2 modules, so three modules of that for the, for the left-hand side, the TNPC. Bidirectional, because it seems to be the trend on the EV charging today. If it really makes sense to put energy from the car back into the grid, I'm not sure, but this is a trend and everybody wants to be ready for that, so these TNPC modules give you a very good efficiency but on the other hand, also very good um, size of the filter. You can really optimize the filtering uh, because you have the three-level topology. Then we have the primary um, on, the, on the DC to DC conversion. That's simply a full bridge, full silicon carbide. And then on the secondary, we actually split the voltage because there are some cars that need the 400, 450 volt DC bus. Some other cars might need the 800 to 900 volt DC bus. By splitting the topology in this way, you can actually decide whether you put both H bridges on the secondary side in series, so you get the 800 to 900 volt. If you put them in parallel, you stay with the, with the 400, 450 volt, but you increase the current. This is all possible to realize using our semi-top E1, E2, which is available from yeah, 40 to roughly 250 amps. Second application that I really would like to talk about is motor drives. Um, today, silicon carbide is not that prominent in motor drives, so I'm also happy that my colleague from Mitsubishi put that up. It is a huge market, and there is a definitely some very good spot for silicon carbide in that market, but not everywhere, because there are some limitations that, that have to be fulfilled by the power electronics to make sure they work well. I basically put up three here. First one, you need a sufficient short circuit rating. I do not know any motor drive designer that would go for a power semiconductor that can deliver no short circuit capability at all. And that is sometimes in silicon carbide a bit of a weakness. Um, we are working on a, on a complete portfolio right now that can deliver the two microsecond of short circuit capability to make that compatible to uh, motor drive applications. The second one, equally important, is a DVD-T limitation you usually have. So the motor windings do not like fast switching. And that's, first of all, contradictory, contradictory to what silicon carbide is. It's all about fast switching. So what you usually have to do is you have to slow it down. Even IGBTs, you have to slow down to something like 5 to 10 kilovolt per microsecond, depending how well the motor is produced, how long the motor cables are. The good news is, if you slow it down to 5 to 10 kV, also silicon carbide still will give you a benefit. You see that on the right-hand side, where we made an example calculation, 15 kilowatt, um, 5 kilohertz in this case, relatively low, um, but limited to the 5 kV per microsecond. And you see that the losses are coming down a bit. The efficiency is over the complete power range above 99%. It's just a six-pack, so you would have to rectify it additionally. Um, but you see there is a, it's a good point, and um, this is actually then the next which drive application is, are the ones that, that make sense. Exactly like Eugen said, it's the continuously running applications. It's pumps, it's fans, it's compressors of all kinds, whether that's air conditioning or it's a heat pump. There it makes sense because they will run 8, 10, 15 hours a day, 
and every promil of um, efficiency that you gain is basically pure money that you save on the other hand. So we do not see necessarily silicon carbide in all the motor drive applications because there is an intrinsic disadvantage, which is the overload capability. If you go into very high output currents with the silicon carbide MOSFET, you usually obtain also quite high conduction losses. So for us, the, the right market within or the right segment with our, within the motor drive is whatever is continuously running, low overloads, pumps fans typically. So just to summarize, a bit more self-promotion, I'm sorry. Um, so Semicron offers you a, a great experience in packaging. We offer you all the packages that you need for your industry applications as well as automotive. Um, we have uh, state-of-the-art packaging technologies like the sintering, like different bonding technologies to get the most out of silicon carbide. We just introduced a, a sintered mini skip, which is a, a low power module that can now run continuously at 175 degrees C. And uh, finally, we have access to all the silicon carbide uh, suppliers to really select the right chip for your application. Thank you very much. Open for questions. Thank you, Stefan. It's a nice presentation. Um, a quick clarification. When you say you're targeting greater than two microseconds of short circuit withstand time, is that the die or the module? As a packager, we always talk about the module. So we, we will get the die, it might have intrinsic capability, but might not be confirmed in the bare die data sheet, right? That's the common issue we have. So we make it work on the module and we take the guarantee, we take the, um, we make sure that, that also in our data sheet it will show the two microseconds then in the module. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Boro, thank you, Holger, to have this opportunity. Um, very uh, great to be here again physical event. So um, I will focus my presentation mainly about our strategy um, um, up to 25 and after 25. So no uh, product presentation. Uh, so first of all, where we are, so Rome, um, okay, we rely on more than 20 years of experience in the silicon carbide development. So leading in the innovation uh, started with the MOSFET um, and uh, with the planer and then we switched to the trench. Uh, first uh, industrialized uh, power module also on the market, uh, uh, long experience, more than 10 years now in the automotive field, which uh, plays a very important role uh, in our uh, strategy. And uh, also as we have also vertical integration um, of uh, production system, so starting from the raw material, wafers, uh, up to the uh, um, front end uh, with packages. So, um, yeah, I would like uh, to say that uh, we have already samples uh, now with the, with the 8 inch and the plan is, is to bring it to the market uh, next year. Uh, so here is a picture about um, our uh, uh, different facilities. So we have here in Nuremberg our facility for the Roifer, uh, Cycrystal, um, not far away from here. And uh, we have uh, different locations for the uh, front end and, and back end. Um, in different uh, regions, um, and um, yeah. Also, um, in our strategy, uh, we have different uh, partners. So we yeah, announced uh, several times uh, yeah, some some partners like uh, Vitesco Technology for the automotive and uh, e powertrain inverter based on SSE, uh, fourth generation from us, and um, others in um, international uh, customers and uh, car OEMs, and uh, new is also with uh, Lucide in the US uh, for an uh, ombre charge application. Uh, now our fourth generation, just an, um, uh, yeah, a shortcut about what kind of features uh, and value to, to the customer here. So we, um, uh, we, we could reduce the, 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 the RDS on compared to the third generation of uh, around 40%. Uh, it is a robust and reliable structure. So I hear right now that Stefan talk about the, the microseconds uh, of, of a device. So in our fourth generation already we, we, we can provide uh, four microseconds. Um, it's still a discussion nowadays, for sure. <laughs> Some people even would like to have it even lower than uh, four microseconds. Um, but uh, also here, um, uh, we provide two different uh, voltage classes, 750 and 1200 volt. And um, in, in some applications, um, customer would like to use the same gate voltages like RGBTs. So uh, to use the 15 volt, uh, now we, we, we can provide this in the, uh, in the new structure. And uh, yeah, uh, for sure, they will be following uh, different uh, voltage classes afterwards. 
and packages too. Um, the big subject for sure uh, for many guys nowadays, uh, so we, where we are at the moment, um, I would like to quote the word of Eugen he showed uh, before. Um, um, we are not in a phase to convince our customer to switch from IGBT to silicon carbide. I would say the discussion is already done. It's more now we are how to realize the, uh, the, the package uh, in a big volume, uh, the, the prices, reliability, long time reliability. This is now the discussion nowadays in the market. And therefore, it's for sure um, we have to adapt our um, investment plan for sure. Uh, in the last couple of uh, yeah, three years, uh, a lot of dynamics uh, came, especially in the e-power train market. So our top management already announced uh, four years ago to invest uh, around 600 million US dollar in a new fab. What we uh, like to, to show here this is this new fab in, uh, in Chicago. Uh, this is already done. It's uh, now uh, start to, to in, uh, integrate the machines inside. But uh, we, we find in the last two years that uh, too many uh, dynamics and projects and pipelines that this money is not enough anymore. <laughs> then we have to duplicate the money, so around more than one billion. And we believe it today, it will be also not enough that we have to increase it even more uh, than, than this number. Of course, the, the numbers need to be fixed for sure in, uh, in the next uh, couple of months. Yeah. So that's all a short uh, cut about what we're doing in the moment in market. So uh, yeah. Uh, if you have any question, please feel free. Thank you, Bodo. Yeah, hello there. And also to all of you attending online today. Um, I'm very happy to be here on site and uh, thanks for being given the opportunity here to introduce you to the news from Infineon for green energy solutions. So let's start here by looking on a few prominent use cases for decarbonization and a more sustainable world. So every electric vehicle needs charging power. And this charging station should preferably be powered by renewables. That's the whole idea, right? And then we also need backup storage energy systems to make it all all work. And the impact of SIC in all these power conversion steps is of course huge when it comes to efficiency, power in a given form factor, and, and, and at the end of the day, and more efficient material utilization, housings, transportation efforts, and everything. So for all these power conversion steps, Infineon is now consistently shaping the um, SIC product offering with a broad portfolio, also with enhanced features to maximize the flexibility for our customers to further accelerate the adoption of energy smart solutions. And if you come and visit our booth, um, you can see here then the latest 1200 volt product additions, both in modules and discretes. And as one example here in the new TO form factor offering, we have the new low ohmic types, 7, 14, 20 milliohm, which actually enables really a much higher single device power. 15 kilowatt to 30 kilowatt can now be powered by a single TO247 form factor um, in input rectifiers or DC-DC stages towards the battery, as, as one example. When it comes to enhanced features, um, the latest cool SIC-based technology advancements gives now more freedom, we actually say full freedom, in choosing the gate voltage. And this enhanced gate voltage operation makes the sign in easier, more flexible for different types of gate drive circuitry, all to maximize here flexibility and faster adoption. The latest product offering here, the new low ohmic types, also includes the award-winning .xt interconnection technology. 
um, which further boosts here the current and power you can take out of the chip and increase here also further the system power density. It's basically a enhanced power loss budget just enabled by the interconnection here between the silicon carbide chip and the package that has a benefit both in increased current and system power and reliability. So this was about 1200 volt class, of course a very prominent voltage class in, in power conversion systems. But we, we are now again revisiting this use cases we looked on on the first slide. It's more and more coming as a trend now to increase power without increasing the current by going up in this link voltage. So the press release from Infineon yesterday was that we are now announcing a broad portfolio of 2 kV rated devices to enable simple solutions here for 1500 volt DC bus applications. 2 kV low dynamic loss SIC devices enable here a significantly simpler solution. No need to go for free level switching anymore. And we are very much looking forward to see those very powerful systems yeah, increasing the, the power without increasing the current. And we have developed this um, 2KV technology with both uh, striking performance, very low area specific RDS on, and also a low fit rate for 1500 volt DC applications. So this supports now full true current operation at 1500 volt by a sufficient over voltage margin. 1700 volt is more the classical IDBT voltage originating from let's say 690 volt AC drives or wind power converters. But for this energy smart application now, solar and energy storage and so on, 1500 volt DC is the DC link and here 2 kV is needed. And if you, again, come and visit our booth, you can have a look on both the module and discrete products in this new voltage class for cool SIC products. Thank you very much for listening in. I can now take your questions. I, thank you for the talk, Fanny. Um, I, I saw that Infineon released a 2.3 kV class of IGBT modules for, for this purpose, for solar. Can you give us some clarity as to why the silicon carbide is at 2 kV instead of 2.3 kV? The 2 kV um, SIC uh, offering is, is really tailored now for 1500 volt DC applications. And if you look on, on really the, the broader implementation, this, this is the right voltage. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, and I appreciate Bodo and Holger for this opportunity to speak uh, very briefly about how Microchip helps our silicon carbide clients adopt silicon carbide with ease, speed, and confidence. Uh, so my name is Kevin Spear, and I'm with the Silicon Carbide Power Solutions Group at Microchip Technology. So we all know that high-voltage silicon carbide uh, offers disruptive and um, you know, step function improvements in your power conversion system. We know this. But it can also be challenging to adopt for these same reasons. So Microchip Silicon Carbide uh, helps customers adopt silicon carbide again with ease, speed, and confidence. And we do this in three main ways. The first is because of our device's unrivaled ruggedness and performance, gone is the need to derate, uh, include snubbers, or in many cases, uh, design for redundancy. So this in a nutshell gives you ability to drastically reduce your total system cost using silicon carbide for Microchip. The second piece to this is between our gate drivers, microcontrollers, and all of our other peripheral components, as well as our design support tools, we allow customers to solve problems in many cases before they even arise. Uh, and especially with our gate drivers, we accelerate time to market for many of our customers by as much as six months. And then finally, we live in a world, as we all know, a very tight supply uh, in the semiconductor world. And this supplies not just the silicon, but to silicon carbide as well. 
Um, we have, Microchip has developed a procurement and manufacturing strategy that has us shipping new silicon carbide orders in as little as eight weeks. So the technology announcement we'd like to uh, give you today is our new 3.3 kV family of silicon carbide power devices. But before we talk about the products themselves, we'd like to talk just a moment about the problems that we're solving. So we all know that uh, the, the performance of silicon IGBTs can be very problematic. This is particularly true of the switching performance. Uh, IGBTs are very, very lossy, even at modest switching frequencies. So this, this lossiness at high, at high switching frequencies puts tight shackles on a designer's ability to improve the system's size, weight, efficiency, and in many cases, the system cost. So what we can do with silicon carbide is we can operate at higher switching frequency and still be able to maintain efficiency, in many cases improve it, reduce the size, weight, and more of the system. As well, beyond switching performance, 3.3 kV silicon carbide can reduce part count, as we just saw from uh, previous presentations. And reducing part count also reduces the number of points of failure, so it can enhance the lifetime of your system as well. So getting into the products themselves, um, as part of this 3.3 kV product announcement, we're excited that we have the highest current rating of, of 3.3 kV products in silicon carbide. So our MOSFETs um, go up to 25 milliohms, and this is about 100 amps of current, continuous strain current. And then our diodes are at 30 amp and 90 amp ratings. I should also mention that all of these products that you see here, we offer as bare dye because we're seeing more and more that customers wish to develop their own packaging solutions as well. So again, we offer these products in the TO packages that you see, but also in bare dye format. Okay. So with that, that's, that's everything I have to show you today. Um, uh, Microchip, we know how to conquer the challenges of innovation, and we're here to help you adopt silicon carbide with ease, speed, and confidence. Thank you. How do you manage the creepage clearance distances on a 3.3 kV TO device? So in many cases, this is solved by the customer at the end because creepage and clearance, as we get to these high voltages, uh, these, these through-hole packages are going to meet some major challenges. So um, in many cases, this is solved at the customer end um, by conformal coding and other means.